so they've done huge amounts of work, and, uh, you know, obviously new fascias, new yeah. windows and doors, they've done the sign for us, we've got the light, we've got the disabled access now, so that Jenny is walking along. <laughs> How are you? I was going to say, ably demonstrated by Jenny. <laughs> um, they've done the landscaping outside, so you can you know, with flowers and everything planted. They're just all about the whole building. So what, what is actually here, James? Right, what we, well, when we um, took it over back in, or when it was opened back in January, we opened up for people to come, either as individuals, just you know, tea and coffee, uh, and a chat, and a place for people wow. to come to. It's free, no child for me. Yes. We also started running different groups. So we had a chair-based exercise group. We had a mother and or carer and um, craft group that was meeting once a month. We were doing yes. what we call BBC, Bingo Ball Games and Cakes. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's, it's just different, you know, the community of, there's nothing sort of permanent here. It's kind of constantly available for others. Yeah, yeah. So it's open. So we, we, I said, we were having groups, but also people could come. Just have some coffee, have some coffee, have some coffee. And it was already, I mean, we opened January by March. We were already having, um, probably, I think, the, the, the week before the shut, we had a footfall of over 100 through the doors in a week. So it was not necessarily all different people, and there were a yeah. meetings that were held here, which bubbled one was up, but it was being used for meetings at the area forum meet here. Um, we've had lots of people, and it's been really good because we've had people who are isolated living in the flats or just around, who've come and just built up friendships, you know, and, and really felt that this was somewhere they could relax, they could meet people. So, um, we, yeah. Right, who is everyone? Is it? Is it? Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. All of this stuff are the 410 trainees. The, the Tom, it was managed by Tom and Harry, but everybody else has been part of the team, the crew, who, um, this was part of this apprenticeship challenge that they had put right, together yeah. a project, oh, no, no, support no, a project and work and fundraise and do so you've got brilliant fundraisers and you know people who put all the back uh, work into it. So they've, they've done this project. I was going to say, Harry, do you want to explain to me? So Harry and Tom have been working all together. Let's explain what the project was that you had to do. So first off, we had a meeting back in May, I think. Yeah. Um, basically give us a wish list of things they wanted to have done to the building. Now they did already have some internal works done right. previously, um, which gave us the chance to do more externally and bring life back to the building. Uh, just everyone in Brown, the community, just give them a reason to come to see yeah. what, what, what the Umbrella's Code is all about. Um, and I think the works that we've done shows that, especially the ramp for especially the elderly residents, yeah. they can yeah. now get into the building easily before you'd have to park in the car park and then come all the way around yes. yeah. uh, just to use the building. Uh, paving, for example, we had a lot of trip hazards. Uh, right. It's a little step to start with. Uh, and that we've now levelled that all out, uh, yeah. so it's easy access. Uh, Security-wise, via windows and doors. Um, I think before you had the yeah. in, in, yeah. problems in, in the past, and it's now lockable with right. keys, so it's a lot better. Uh, and so you guys did the actual sort of specking out of the work, or actually physically did the work as well? Uh, so it was done by our supply chain partners, right. Portum Have. So we have a lot of work in Chesterfield already. Yeah. Um, we had site visits. It was funny enough because when we still in lockdown and stuff, so it was difficult at first to get the site visits on. Uh, and meet the subcontractors on site, yeah. um, and then have to say to them, Can you do it for free? Because uh, yeah. it is a zero budget project yeah. uh, to start yeah. with. That's the um, press release Great. that's gone out. So, yeah, that was a bit of the uh, icing on the cake, really. Yes, yesterday, Derby Times published, published the story. Fantastic. Uh, it gives you a bit more of an overview of the works that were carried out, uh, the value of what the project should have cost. Um, Fantastic. I just think, yeah, I think it worked. Main thing for us is the long lasting legacy that's going to leave for Portland. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And just show how much we care about the communities around where we're doing works. So, Grangewood Estate, I don't know if you're familiar with the works that we've done there. Uh, and this is kind of like an add on. Yeah. 
that we're going to kind of work over there and train for the next couple of but there's nowhere for them to kind of go and have their kind of downtime and just more to create an area where they could kind of have their time as comfortable and kind of yeah. being welcoming and also, you know, we've we also just got some uh, a Wi-Fi routes as well to come down and uh, change which people can kind of run the computers and stuff and help with universal credit and jobs yeah. and, and CVs and things like that so it's somewhere they can really see as like a hall to, 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 to go to if they're really needed. Okay. Excellent. Okay, well, we'll keep everyone waiting any longer. Have a look inside. <laughs> 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 Um, <laughs> I was going to say, you, you, did, you did come, you were happy oh, here before, yeah. Yeah. Um, so now we have two really nice to toilets, you know, that are sort of properly there rather than having, I mean, there was sort of like a huge great waiting room almost before you went into Right. The so the toilets, <coughs> see that, that mark across there, all of that was toilets, but it still right. only had four toilets in it. Yeah. That's random. So, um. Yes, I'll just bring you in here. So we've now got an office. Okay, lovely. They've got uh, Monopoly in the, in the uh, <laughs> don't, don't Toy let, Library, we'd glad to know. Don't let Toby and Ray near it. You can just sign it. Do a competitive edge. <laughs> yeah, I, I do enjoy them. Monopoly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've got an office here. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we, we all have great fun while we're playing, don't we? Well, you do. <laughs> yeah. You're destroying everybody else. <laughs> it's that ruthless streak. Uh, yeah. Is yours the cheese? Please, yeah. Do you have much milk? Just a little spot, thanks. Yeah, so we, we, um, we've had the, the basic kitchen thanks. put in. Yeah, well, but then um, we, uh, we've had an old fridge that somebody had given to us. We're going to start doing meals for people in the area who... Yeah. Um, they get the bags from Fair Share, but often there's a lot. To, there's so much in it, but people don't know what to cook with them, so no. it ends up getting thrown away. So what we want to do is to get the food, do some meals, and say, to pick, you know, actually give them a like a takeaway pot. So then they've only got to put it in the microwave. But then the next sort of step on from that is to give people a recipe to say, well, actually, if you enjoyed that, this is how we made it. Yeah. Here's yeah. the thing, so that when you've got these ingredients, you can do it yourself. Right. The other thing that um, Forte provided us with was the cooker over there, or that right. side, which is a tabletop hob, so that it means that we can put a table out and people can practice cooking it themselves while we're demonstrating, you know, it just gives a wider access to people to be able to, you know, to actually give cooking lessons, but, you know, just sharing health and So it's open to, for, for all ages then? For everybody, yes, that's the point. We want to try and uh, engage everybody from the prime babies up to the a lot of the old, very elderly yeah. residents yeah, yeah. who live, yeah. you know, in, and we, we've had quite a few people coming in and making use of it. Um, you know, and the people that I've kept in touch with while lockdown's been on, people who we've got to know before, I've got their numbers, so I sort of texted them and emailed them or yeah. messaged and rang them. And they're all like, oh, I can't wait till it opens again. We really yeah. miss it. We really want to come back. You know, and, sort of and, and in terms of the <laughs> bungalows immediately around, are they, are they sort of engaging with it? They didn't initially, because they're older people and they don't like change. without putting too fine points yeah. on it. So they you know, just wanted to like, like it was before. It, was was it wasn't used. No. But they didn't like the fact it was being changed, even though really right. they didn't use it. Um, however, during lockdown, it's actually proved quite beneficial. We did a couple of mornings, Saturday mornings, because um, the nurses were using this again during lockdown to, um, as a base, because they would, uh, had to leave their offices in Ashgate, so they would come up here, use this as a base to sit, work from, wash their hands, you know, just have a, a time to be together rather than sitting in their cars, which is what they were going to have to do. Um, so on a Saturday morning, we two or three mornings, two or three Saturdays, we put tables and chairs outside uh, when, it, when the weather was nice and invited people to come over and have a cup of tea and coffee yeah. outside, which quite a few residents came in, scales did a quiz and things like that. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. so that was really good because they're starting to engage with it. And 
we have made a point of trying to keep keep in touch with them and know what was happening. I mean, Harry and Tom have been very good about going and just engaging with them as well. Yeah. Well, Vera Lynn Day as well, didn't we? Yeah, VE Day, we did a Vera Lynn, we, <laughs> Vera Lynn impression. <laughs> now we had the keyboard and Gail Sussman and Will played the guitar and we just sang We'll Meet Again and yeah. did the they silence together. And they all came out and sat on their front doors. Very you, good. You know, <laughs> We always wanted to welcome them and take them on this journey and keep them up to date with what we're doing. Uh, when, the, when the work's happening, the tanks are going on, the storage cabins are getting dropped in, the new windows, we always wanted to keep them up to date on that journey. So we posted letters through the doors uh, to start a project detailing everything we'll be doing, uh, when we start, when we'll be finishing. Just rather than doing it, and then like, we want to involve them in it as well, as well as just doing the work. And, um, yeah, yeah. We, we thought it was quite important. Um, it feels like it's there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not our it's, it's their thing. It's yeah. 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 helping to change it. We need to involve them. <laughs> and so what exactly is Fort, and then it's, it's a care company, is it? Or... <laughs> Go on, I'll, I'll let you. Uh, you can no, so uh, we're working nationwide. Uh, you know Wilmot, Wilmot Dixon partnership? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we were, Fortin, we're a part of there, um, but we've now come out on our own. Yeah. Uh, so we do work We're doing on, what? Uh, so mainly um, uh, R&M, so repairs and maintenance. Um, but in Chesterfield especially we do housing schemes, so you know um, where elderly residents live. Uh, so shelter housing, over, yeah, sheltered housing schemes. I think we've done on to our fifth one now. So we're really? in Stavely. Um, I think the, we've got a new build in just there uh, in Brampton. But you build them and then run them, do you? Or, or so, you just build them? No, we refurbish them. So we'll have yeah. the, the right. sheltered housing scheme, we're kind of over and down. All right. the buildings we, we, we take them. Uh, we do things like we render uh, windows, bathrooms inside, doors. Right. We probably make them look really unhomely. And we love to talk to them, the residents who live in there today. They're able to live on their own, um, but obviously sometimes they have like little access, it's easy access for them as well, and a lot of, a lot of yeah. terrible access around. Um, we've also done, I think in on Brampton, we've talked about some modular drops, so they're all the ones that are built yeah. outside of, 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 the, of the compound and then kind of crane did. Um, and so the trainees that are here, yeah. they were on an apprenticeship with for Tim already, and then as part of that apprenticeship had this project, yeah, so every, yeah, every, every, year, every, year, every, every year we do the project. Um, we split up into the north region, uh, Midlands, and the south. It's, it's, it's effectively a competition to, 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 to try and see who can be the kind of best project. Um, and it, it happens every few months, and we obviously at the end of the year it kind of gets judged by the kind of people hiring up in our business. And but we've got to basically show that it's it's a, a long lasting project. It provides the community, um, and we've got really detail in this, in this submission we do on what what effects it's going to have on the people that we meet. Yeah. <laughs> so are we keeping everyone out of here? <laughs> <laughs>